You're listening to Rebel Spirituality with me, Sam Goldfinch. Here's the truth. Wisdom doesn't follow rules. So each week we're going to explore what it means to wake up your way so you can live a more peaceful, creative and inspired life no matter your circumstances. It's time to blaze your unique path to truth. Yo team, if you're listening to this, you're you're listening to the first Spiritual Rebel interview on the Rebel Spirituality podcast, and uh, I'm so excited about this. You can expect these every now and again. In order for these interviews to happen, I need to be called into having a conversation with someone who really is blazing their own path to love and understanding and bringing their own wisdom into the world, that kind of tapping into that source of wisdom that resides at the heart of their being and, and, and making waves in their own way. And I'm just so excited to... Uh, to have the first one of these airing. It's with a very good friend of mine, Mr. Scott Pinyard, and uh, I won't say too much because we're going to dive deep together on the on the conversation itself. But when these air, they will be four questions. I think I'm going to keep them the same. The reason being that we're going to get some really wildly different and very interesting answers and responses to these questions, which I think is very cool because because people who are tuning into their own wisdom, they're going to have different ways of seeing things, even though we'll Many of them will be pointing in the same direction. It's uh, it's going to be quite a ride. All right, team, I'll shut up. Without further ado, I'll hand you over to me and Scott. And uh, yeah, see you there. Awesome. I don't know where this is recording to, but we will find out. Um, right, dude, welcome, Mr. Scott Pinard. It's amazing to have you here. I, uh, I was just saying there's a whole bunch of stuff I probably should have thought about that I haven't thought about, but hey-ho, here we go. I, it's always uh, the best way to do it. Just jump yeah. on and record. Yeah, we're going to figure this out, right? Well, I mean, the first thing I want to say before anything else is that I'm just so excited that you're here doing the first kind of feature length Rebel Spirituality podcast. Um, And yeah, in order to get this invitation, man, you have to be deemed a spiritual rebel. So I fucking go high bar. I made it. (laughs) So yeah, you you leapt over it, man. You flew over the top. And um we're going to talk about some really, really cool shit that we've been co-creating. And this is for many people, this might be the first place they're hearing about it. So be sure to stay around till the end because we're going to riff on that. Um, but yeah, as I say, like this is going to be a conversation. There's going to be a few questions that will that will be the same each week. Um, and it's going to be really interesting to go on this ex- exploration. Um, and you were just a really obvious choice to get on here for the first one, man. So welcome. Well, I'm psyched. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're so welcome. We've known each other for a good while, man. Like we've worked together in various different places and, you know, we've wanted to put something together together for a long time. Uh, And it's, it's finally happening. And this is uh, just like a really nice way for us to kind of introduce you to anyone that's in my world that hasn't met you before. So um, anything you want to say or intro stuff before we get started and I start asking some questions? Uh, Sure. I mean, so just like a little bit of background on me, you know, I have been uh, exploring ideas and life for a long time. Um, I've always been super interested in consciousness, in the way we think, in the way we live our lives and like how that happens. And I've explored that through like a bunch of different angles, you know, both uh, actually Sam and I, you, we've talked before about like how the word spirituality here in America, I think means something different ish kind of. Um, so I've like explored a lot of those things. Um, and I've, I've always been fascinated by it. Um, and I've kind of landed somewhere personally uh, on words like spiritual and and that sort of stuff that um, that is really satisfying to me. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, I bring a lot of these ideas into what I do now, which is coaching, right? Like I I help people change essentially. That's that's what I do. Um, but I try to do it on a on a deeper level. Yeah, dude, I love that. I love 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 that. And the whole part, like the rebel part of rebel spirituality here is trust in their own wisdom to guide us. It's not borrowing yeah. other people's ideas and dogmatic thinking. It's it's really listening for that very quiet or loud voice within that's saying, you know, that's what's right for me. So, um, mm-hmm. well, dude, that's an awesome intro and it leads us perfectly onto my kind of first question for you to riff on, which is this, you know, all yeah. that said, as you sit with he- me here today, what does what does the word spirituality mean to you? Holy cow. I Can I swear, by the way? Is oh yeah, fine? fucking uh, let it out. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I figured that was the case, but I've learned to ask. I make um, the rules. That fucking word uh, has been 
it's been so tough for me over time. Hmm. You know, I've gone in and out of, you know, well, I said seeking, right? Like looking for different answers. And, um, you know, for me, a lot of the times it's wrapped up in religion, uh, which I'm not the sort of person that you would call religious by any means. Um, and then spirituality kind of felt like for a long time, this sort of, I don't know, indefinable sort of fluffy term. And, you know, I spent a good chunk of, you know, my background is in science and engineering mm -hmm. and um, spirituality just kind of felt like, you know, butterflies and fairies and shit. And I, I like couldn't like connect the two. Um, but, you know, over this time and over this time of searching and, and really thinking about it, what the term has come to mean to me um, is something very different. Right. Like what I really see it as now is more of the deeper inner workings of life, right, of consciousness, of how we operate. And through some of my own experiences uh, in doing this work and researching this stuff, as well as working with you know thousands of other people, I, I, I've come to understand it to mean this sort of deeper version of life, this deeper view of life. Um, and that has actually taken on, I was going to say taken on a concrete form, but I don't know if that's really what I mean, but that's taken on a concrete definition for me of these sort of conversations about consciousness and how thoughts arrive, arise um, and how we sort of think about our lives. And so there's not a ton of woo associated with it with me. Um, but it really is about these, you know, how, how does our experience arise and what does it mean to be human? I fucking love that. Those two questions are that kind of pretty, like I might use slightly different language, but the powerhouse mm -hmm. behind a lot of what I'm up to as well, which is why we've been yeah. drawn together. I think exactly to yeah. do this stuff. Well, I love that man. And I think a lot of people will resonate with it. And, um, yeah, there's a, it looks to me that spirit duality like there's this it's almost like this formless thing that flows through everyone's experience right and i think it's further upstream than um any kind of religious clothing that we might have like it it seems yeah. to be it's 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 back further than that as well so i love i love that share awesome dude mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. right okay okay here we go <laughs> oh i love this one and you can interpret this in whatever way you want right so when did yeah. you begin to wake up this okay so this is this is a tough one for me um because in a lot of ways it's kind of in my nature like i can remember in my entire life asking questions that kind of fall into this category mm -hmm. um you know i can i can remember thinking things like um well we talk about this in our project sam but like i can remember as a kid thinking like oh when i see the color green is that the same color you see? Like I've always sort of, I've always been curious about experience and what that is both on an individual and a group level. Um, but in terms of when I really be able, began to wake up to these ideas and these concepts and this way of thinking and engaging, um, I'd say it really had to do with my own personal journey with, with alcohol. Um, so, you know, I being in a place where I was stuck for so long, part of the experience of getting out of that was to start thinking about my thinking. Um, and that really, uh, that really started to shift things for me on a, on a deeper level. Like I said, I'd always kind of been a seeker, but, uh, it was this process of starting to learn about some of these ideas and starting to consciously go deeper that I started to wake up to some of the, some of the concepts that we talk about, you know, and I, for as long as I can remember, I have been a, a fan of a lot of what people might call spiritual literature, right? Um, some of those deeper ideas, like the four agreements is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. I remember reading that like, gosh, maybe like 20 years ago now. Um, but when I really began to go beyond being exposed to the ideas and started to take some of these concepts on board, that was probably about, about 10 years ago now. Um, and everything started to change. Um, the way that I saw myself, the way that I saw my own thoughts, the way that I started seeing other people and their own thoughts, um, 
it shifted completely shifted the way that I view life and it still does. And that's one of the things that I think is really interesting about this concept or this sort of level of conversation is it's like, there's, there's always a new revelation. There's always an, I don't want to use that word at all. There's always a new like understanding, right. A new level um, that continues to evolve and shape how I see things. You know, I think Sam, you and I were talking about, we were meeting about something the other day and I was talking about this concept of like, you know, we're kind of on a boat going down a river and it, we're looking at, you know, whatever we're looking at a, at a monument at something on the shore. And it's like, the perspective is constantly changing. And I feel that way about um, work with these sort of concepts. It's like the longer I do it, the more depth and insight I get and the more amazing and incredible it is. Um, and to me, that's, the process of waking up, right? Um, that it's not like a moment, that it's this like constant unfolding thing. And one of the things that I'm particularly, um, I don't know, I get misty eyed about, and this is super nerdy. I don't even know if you know this, is science, right? Like I, I can't show you, but literally right above my computer, I have a giant uh, poster, which is the poster from the Pioneer project in the 70s, which are some of the earliest interstellar things that we have sent out into space. It literally makes me weepy. And so this poster that I have is actually the drawing that Carl Sagan did that shows pictorially what we look like, what the craft looks like, where it's from. I um, I get incredibly emotional about some of those things, the size of the universe. I am totally rambling now. I hope this is No, okay. it's cool, dude. I, yeah. I, I, I'm going to I get really drawn into that. And the same, and the same thing is true with, you know, work in consciousness and work in, um, you know, quantum physics. Like I, I'm very inspired by that. And so I draw a lot of what I read and what I think about, um, in those places where sort of science and spirituality meet. And I don't mean in a like wooey misuse of science sort of way. I mean, in a true like bleeding edge, we're trying to discover things. And it's that discovery that really drives me, that understanding and also the understanding that it keeps going. That is just, um, I don't know, it keeps me, it keeps me engaged and it, and it keeps me wanting to learn and it keeps me, in awe of what's actually happening here dude i i love some of the i just love the pin, picture you painted you know that kind of those stages of waking up you know being on the boat <laughs> passing the monument and then you wake up to the fact that you're on a spinning ball of rock and then you wake up to the fact that you're orbiting another fiery ball of whatever it is and then and it just keeps going and i think um I don't like I think one of the things that's brought us definitely together is also the fact that we don't need to be woo. And I mean, being like the whole woo woo thing, I, that means different things to different people, Absolutely. too. Right. But ultimately, yeah. we don't have to bend how it works in order, like it's it's yes. mystical and freaky and spooky and amazing and haunting yeah. and beautiful enough. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I just it's yeah. And that that's so cool. So I, I love that. And 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 it's nice to know that it's uh it's never going to stop, right? It's never going to stop. But just keep waking up again and again and again and again. Yeah. I mean, every book I pick up, I mean, every time, well, you and I have conversations, like that's the, that's the thing. And like, to me, living this sort of, or thinking about something like spirituality is not a destination. It is like a constant discovery. I think it's almost like a, forever conversation <laughs> i was gonna say it's like <laughs> we've been we've been struggling to like pin the tail on the donkey and do this thing. but yeah we're gonna it is like a conversation that that just never ends a forever conversation right i love that yeah. awesome dude okay i love this question what's one thing that you know to be true that's profoundly changed your life that you'd love our listeners to uh to also know You know, there's a concept that I, it's funny, I struggle to explain it because I, I worry that it's not going to land, but that's okay. Um, hopefully it lands to some level. 
I, uh, I'm a big fan of this idea of story in as much as stories are how we make sense of the world. Right. And so we bring in this information through our senses and then, you know, we only understand so much. And so we have to like make some assumptions, but we create pictures. Essentially, we create stories of how things work. The thing that I want people to know that that I, I truly want people to understand is that all of those stories, all of that way of seeing things, all of the way the way the world works, according to you, it's all made up and it's all changeable. And the reason that this is so powerful is that understanding that leads you to an incredible level of freedom that like, you know, I talk to you in, in coaching people, I talk to people all the time who are stuck. I talk to people who are, you know, depressed and anxious. I talk to people who are, you know, fighting with addictive substances. I talk to people who are trying to shift something in their lives and can't seem to like make that happen. And they're angry and frustrated about it. And all the time it comes down to these stories that are holding them back. And so the one thing that I want people to know, and this may or may not land with people, like I said, but the one thing I want people to know is that there's always an ability to shift something. There's always an ability to change one of those stories. And it might feel like a fundamental bedrock thing, but because you've created them in their mind, it means you can change them. And that is the path to getting to wherever you want to go. And especially if you feel stuck, these are the things that stand in your way. And I, I, I really feel like if everyone knew this and understood it and felt it like I do that, like, um, yeah, things would be, things would be very different for all of us. Yeah. That's is huge, man. We spoke about how I can't remember exactly what we said, but it, it was really powerful when we spoke about it, how we can talk about the kind of, individual stories we might have the story that relates to that part of our life the story that relates to that and if you keep going upstream and upstream in the end you get to like the the author's viewpoint the ultimate viewpoint where you're where you know in every instant that story is effectively a metaphor for our own personal reality correct and knowing that it's all made up means that you can wake up to it at any point and see through what's like it's so it is hard to talk about actually you get to a point where because you move from because the stories can very much look like the content of the story but then you get to the point of understanding how those stories are being created through you and the you that's doing it you know because we're talking about a very different you to the voice that's rattling around in your head so it starts to get very uh kind of ineffable hard all we can do is point and i mean i know that we're that's why we're on this journey together but yeah it's huge man and then we get to go on what were you going to say i was going to say when people when people get to that point with this idea of story um there's a spaciousness to Mm -hmm. life that i don't think we feel otherwise when we stay when we stay lost in those stories when we stay you know when we're living right there right? When our stories are all we can see and we think, oh, this is just life. Um, I don't want to say it feels bad, but like, it feels like limited. Um, And I think when we start to think about these things and we start to think about these stories, and as you say, like go upstream, you start to realize that there's a hell of a lot more happening than we're actually paying attention to. And when I say that, what I mean is internally, like with us, with the way that we see and understand the world. And people knowing that they have the opportunity to go in that direction, even though it's weird, even though it can be destabilizing, even though it can, it can, it, it's a hell of a ride. I'll just put it that way. But like, like that to me is something I want people to know that it's available to them right now, wherever they are. Um to to start doing this and start thinking about some of this stuff and it really opens up possibilities and it opens up what life feels like like i said for me it's like so much more spacious than it's ever been yeah yeah like what we were talking earlier about how at that level of who we really are we can we're free we're clear there's this it's it's and when you think about, so I often say that when I'm working with people with alcohol, they'll often say to me, um, 
well, what do I need to learn in order to become free and all of these kinds of things? And and my one of my kind of philosophies, my stories around it is that, well, you're already free. You just don't know it yet. You've just got stuff on top of it. You've just got yeah. some stuff that's, it's like misunderstandings. And, and this subtractive nature of this journey is not about adding more story, although you're welcome yeah. to do that at any point. Like you mm -hmm. are the creator, you can do that stuff. The yeah. truth is that, it's about taking a step back and a step back and a step back to the point where, as I say, you have the perspective of the uh, of the author, which is true freedom, right? It's the blank page. It's and that for a lot of people, I think, in the first instance, can be fucking scary because Absolutely. it's like, <laughs> but there's nothing there. <laughs> but there yeah. is, there is, there's, there's an inherent safety in that space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh on the point of the scary thing and with alcohol, like, you know, I I'm sure like you've had the example too, of like coaching someone and you can see very clearly that they are just stuck right in a story and they cling to it. And I did the same thing. Right. And we do this in all different areas of our life. It's not unique to alcohol, but what I find really fascinating is that that clinging to that story is that fear of what happens if I let go. Mm. Right. Like there's a, there's, I think for a lot of us, there is a concern about what happens if we go that deep. Like, what if I really do get to the perspective of the author? What if I really do start seeing that, like, so many things that I um, that I think, that I feel, whatever. What if I do start to realize that that's all happening in my head? Like, then what? Then what is life? And the fear there is almost this... I don't know, almost this like nihilism, right? This like nothing is real sort of idea. Um, but the reality is that the deeper you go into this, the bigger things feel, not the not the more lonely. The, the deeper you go into this, the more connected and interesting things become, not more isolated. And I think that's the thing, especially in struggling with alcohol, is there's this feeling of like, oh, I need to cling to this idea because if I let go, then I'm going to be more alone. But the reality is you're going to be even more connected. You're going to be even in in more um, in more harmony with mm -hmm. with with and attuned to things around you. Um, it's just a totally different way of existing. But yes, there's a lot of fear there. It's like the late, great Terence McKenna said, you know, the trick is to throw or hurl yourself into the abyss and discover it's a feather bed. Yeah, Love. exactly. <laughs> well, dude, that that's so cool. Like, I do have another question and like, it it doesn't, you don't need to answer this, but what else, uh, is there anything else that seems important to share? Is there anything else that you'd like to just put out there in this moment? Yeah. I mean, I guess, and, and uh, this is just a personal thing, but it's something that motivated me for so long. Um, I just want people to know that like life is really fucking weird and magical. And I don't mean magical again, like in a metaphysical sense, I just mean like there's so much to discover and there's so much to learn and you're never ever going to go wrong with trying to understand more. Um, for a very long time, I, I didn't start to think about weird things like weird things would like weird me out, like thinking about consciousness. Right. And Sammy, you know, I've talked about this a lot, but like for a long time that weirded me out, you know, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't really willing to go there, but like when I finally did, like what I found and what I've learned and how I've grown from it is amazing. So I, I just, I want people to know that like, there's so much to explore. Um, and I want to encourage them to do that in whatever way works for them. I love that. It seems like a really um, nice space for us to be able to share as well a way that people can come into our world and go on that journey if 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 they feel called. Um, yeah. So, hey, I feel like, you know, this is a... Uh, this is this is your uh, this is your disco. You're the one being interviewed, so I feel like I want you to start. Like we're we've come together and we've created something, or we're co-creating something really cool. So uh, tell us a bit about it, Scott. What are we up to? Sure. So it's uh, it's called the Forever Conversation. It was kind of like we were hinting earlier before that, like 
understanding and digging into these ideas is it's a thing that happens over time, right? And there isn't an end. And so, you know, Sam and I have, we have been coming from different perspectives, but really digging on some of the same ideas for a long time. And so we've created something we call the forever conversation, which is just a continued exploring of these ideas. You know, one of the things that we wanted to do was um, get some of these ideas and concepts out there and get it out there in a couple of different ways. And so what we've done is we've set up this sort of ongoing, uh, this ongoing project where we're, we're talking about these things and we're uh, we're talking about our perspective on them. And I fully expect uh, that like our perspectives are going to shift. Right. And so what we want to do is we want to have this ongoing conversation with as many people who want to join us. And so we've put this together. Um, it's going to be, it's sort of an on, like I said, it's an ongoing project. There's regular content. We have different levels that people can engage at. Like I know for me, like at certain times in my journey, I just wanted to listen to stuff and that was good enough. There were other times that I wanted to apply it. And there are other times that I wanted to talk about it and like really like dig into it. And so we've put the forget forever conversation together as a way for us all to explore this stuff. Um, and, you know, we're on the journey too. The whole idea here is like, this is like a, not a like guru thing by any means. Like this is all of us exploring, right? Um, you'll hear when Sam and I talk about it, it's like our, our perspective changing and our thoughts growing. And we want to do that with a group of people. And that's, that's what the forever conversation is. I love that dude. You smashed it. And, uh, awesome. <laughs> I guess the only thing that I would add that I think is real, like there's so much stuff that's important to both of us where we where we th see things in the same way but one huge part of this is we want all of you who come on the journey with us to feel more just at home in your life mm. whatever comes come what may you know just to have a rich experience of being human to tap into that part of you the spiritual part of you and also to deepen your experience of the human part all the feelings every end of the spectrum none of this good feelings bad feelings bollocks just just ending false categorizations up leveling your understanding so that you can have deep insights into how your experience is created the truth of who you really are and we're not going to prescribe anything in terms of yes. there's no shoulds or shouldn'ts in this this is absolutely you see what the implications are for you in your life based on what you see um, and then you can come and tell us like what, what, what you've seen and how, and how much more beautiful your life is. And, and for anyone who feels called to come on the journey, like we cannot fucking wait to have you along for the ride. It's going to be wild. And I think just, just before we <laughs> stop recording, it might be worth us just, just underlining the whole, this is going to be wild. If you come on the yeah. journey, shit's going to look different. Um, yeah. How do you want to frame it? <laughs> well, we've talked about this in several ways. So like, you know, I do want to, I do want to warn people that this is, this is destabilizing. Um, not in the sense that like, it's going to, you know, cause you significant problems, but like our goal, our idea, like, and what we're both doing in our own lives is really trying to shake up how we see things. And so, you know, think shit's going to look different. Like it, your life isn't going to look the same as you start to dig into some of this stuff. And and we literally want to warn people about that because sometimes people, um, well, I, I just, I want people to know about that ahead of time because that's the goal, right? The goal is to shake things up. The goal is to challenge, um, to challenge some of these ideas that, that we have about life. And the more we, the deeper we get into it and the weirder it kind of gets, the more things start to shift. And while that can maybe sound scary, it's also this incredible journey. Um, and, you know, I've been destabilizing myself for years with this stuff and it's, it's really amazing and profound what can happen, but uh, yeah, shit's not going to look the same once you start doing this work. No. But if you feel called, there is magic waiting for you. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, dude. We need to mention the link. We need to say where people need to go. So yeah, <laughs> it may be that the foreverconversation.com is, is not up, but if you go to the foreverconversation.com slash intro, 
you will yes. find a video on there just going a little bit deeper into what we're up to um and you can get the opportunity to put your name on the list and if we're already rocking and rolling if you're watching this after the fact after the launch or listening to this then um go to the same place um and you can always reach out to us ping us a message or any of that stuff i'll put all the i'll put our emails email in the show notes um and all that jazz and um yeah man is there anything else we want to say i don't know join us it's going to be awesome join us join the conversation join yeah. the conversation <laughs> All right, dude. Thank you for coming on and being the first person to come and riff with me. This is uh, this is going to be a lot of fun, and um, yeah, I can't wait to uh, I can't wait to get started. Me either. Thanks for having me. See you soon. See ya.